Hello and welcome to the session. The given question says, Madan Lal has an annual income of rupees three lakh thirty thousand, exclusive of HRA. He contributes rupees five thousand per month towards his GPF and pays an annual LIC premium of rupees fifteen thousand. He has invested rupees ten thousand in NSCs. He pays rupees forty five hundred as income tax per month for the first eleven months. Find the income tax liability for the last month of the financial year. So let's start with the solution, and we shall be solving this question by following the following procedure to calculate the tax. And this is for the financial year two thousand five, two thousand six. Here. The first step is to find the gross income of the SSC. In the question, we are given that the annual income of Madan Lal is rupees three lakh thirty thousand. So, his gross income is equal to rupees three lakh thirty thousand. This is the first step. Next step is find the amount of donations, if any, eligible for deduction. And here, since Madan Lal did not make any donations, therefore, we move on to the third step, which says find the amount of total savings maximum to rupees one lakh. So the third step is to find the total savings. Now we are given that contribution to GPF. Is rupees five thousand per month. Therefore, rupees five thousand into twelve per year. This is equal to rupees sixty thousand. Also, we are given that he pays an LIC premium of rupees fifteen thousand annually. Therefore, further we have payment. Sorry. To LIC, and this is equal to rupees fifteen thousand, and also he invested rupees ten thousand in NSCs. Therefore, contribution to NSCs is equal to rupees ten thousand. Therefore, his total savings. Is equal to rupees. On adding these three, we have rupees eighty-five thousand. Next, in the fourth step, we have to subtract the sum of amounts obtained in step two and three from the amount of step one. So, in the fourth step, to find the taxable income. We shall subtract rupees eighty-five thousand from rupees three lakh thirty thousand. Since second step, that is, the amount of donation is nil. Therefore, to calculate the taxable income, we have rupees three lakh thirty thousand minus eighty-five thousand, and this is equal to rupees two lakh forty-five thousand, and then. The next step is round off the amount, if not to the nearest multiple of ten, and get the taxable income. And here, since the amount we got in step four was already a multiple of ten, so let's move on to the next step, which says compute the income tax on the amount obtained in step five. Round off the amount of tax to the nearest rupee, and let us call it as I. And to compute the income tax, we shall be using the following table. And here we are given the rates of income tax. That is, if the taxable income does not exceed rupees one lakh, the income tax is nil. If the taxable income exceeds rupees one lakh and is less than one lakh fifty thousand, then the amount of tax is ten percent of the amount by which the taxable income exceeds rupees one lakh. 
and so on. Let's see what is the taxable income. Here we have. Here the taxable income is 2,45,000. Which lies in this lap. Here we have the taxable income between 1,50,000 and 2,50,000. So here the tax is rupees 5,000 plus 20% of the amount by which the taxable income exceeds rupees 1,50,000. Therefore, in the sixth step, income tax is equal to rupees 5,000 plus 20 percent of the amount exceeding rupees 1,50,000. So we have 2,45,000 minus 1,50,000 and this is equal to 5,000 plus 20 divided by 100 into 95,000 and this one further simplifying gives 5,000 plus on simplifying we have here 19,000 which is equal to 24,000. So the amount of income taxes rupees 24,000. In the seventh step we have to calculate the surcharge on I at the applicable rate and add it to the amount of income tax which we have obtained in step number 6 and to get the total taxable income. Let us denote the income tax obtained in step 6 by I and the rate of surcharge is 10% of the amount of tax payable if the taxable income exceeds rupees 10 lakh and here since the Taxable income is not more than rupees 10 lakh. Therefore, moving on to the next step, which says calculate the amount of sales payable on the amount obtained in step number 7. And the rate of sales is 2% of the amount of tax payable. So, here the eighth step is to calculate the sales, which is 2% of the income tax and income tax is rupees 24,000 so we have 2 divided by 100 into 24,000 which is equal to rupees 480. Now the next step is add the amount obtained in step 7 and step 8 and since step 7 was not applicable, so we shall be adding the amount obtained in step number 8 to the amount obtained in step number 6 to get the tax payable. So the tax payable is equal to rupees 24,000 plus rupees 480 and this is equal to rupees 24,480. 80. The question further says he pays rupees 4500 as income tax per month for the first 11 months. Therefore, tax deducted at source, which is also called TDS, for 11 months is equal to rupees. 4500 into 11 and this is equal to rupees 49500 and since here the TDS which is equal to rupees 49500 is greater than the tax payable which is rupees 24,480. Therefore, he has no liability for the last month of the financial year. And thus we can find the tax refundable in the 12th month as 
and this is equal to rupees 49,500 minus rupees 24,480 and this is equal to rupees 25,020. Hence, our answer is Madan Lal's income tax liability is equal to rupees zero. So, this completes the session. Bye and take care.